So this is uh, just a quick video on uh, cleaning the hybrids, uh, hybrid A to D converters in my uh, 54845A. Uh, as you've seen in some of my other videos, I haven't been uh, going very well in terms of uh, fixing uh, one gigahertz or better oscilloscopes. However, this guy I really wanted, and so I was able to, uh, to get him in an auction and then I started uh, looking at, okay, what was uh, the problems? And the first is that it wouldn't boot. But the, the more interesting one was that, uh, as you can see in the image here, it would fail uh, on the uh, FISO uh, self-test. And what that would mean is if I ignored that uh, and went to the self-calibration, then the unit would actually uh, uh, fail in channels one and three on vertical calibration. Everything else would calibrate, but just not vertical on one and three. And if I put a signal into the unit, it would look uh, uh, exactly the same as, as far as I could tell on all those uh, channels. So what I did is I, I went in and said, well, you know, how am I gonna fix this? And uh, I looked around at a bunch of uh, different blogs and uh, places like that. And I couldn't find any real information that was applicable to the problem I was having. Uh, except for Sharia's uh, blog on uh, the signal path where he talks about uh, having an intermittent fault or a fault with uh, the A to D hybrids and then he took them out and cleaned them. He didn't show that piece though. So what I want to do in my little video here, uh, and I'll post the full video of the repair and, and that to upgrade uh, a little later, but I wanted just to show uh, the process of cleaning. So let's take a look at that. All I have is a lint-free... Um cleaning tip and so I'm just gonna like get some IPA into uh, my little holder here oh. and then I'm just gonna go in and let's just carefully rub around them these undergo a fair bit you saw the size of the heat sinks you know which are these size here so these things are dumping a fair bit of heat and so I wonder if maybe the what's going on is um, you know that's causing some light oxidization of the pogo pins now I don't see any You know, I don't see any um, dirt or anything like that on my on my um, t oh yeah a little bit it's unclear where that's coming from though okay so let's just gently rub across Okay, so now that was number four. So before we put that back in, this is sort of what I wasn't really, you know, I didn't really know what we were going to do with this, but I think I can get away with just giving it just like a little rub like this, you know. just drop put that back on there drop that, and then just drop this guy back in and there you have that all hung down there so let's so there we go it was uh, a fairly simple process a little bit of isopropyl alcohol uh, a keg uh, in a keg laboratories um, precision uh, lint free swab uh, SWP25 uh, was my part number and uh, just rubbed it across all of the hybrids, rubbed across the top of the pogo pins and then reassembled and uh, everything seemed to uh, have worked out and passed there. As you can see the scope now uh, passes uh, all its calibration so it passed its self-test when I did this 
and then 45 minutes later, because that's about how long it takes to run the, um, uh, the calibration routines, it passed all the calibration stuff. So I've got a working 1.5 gig, uh, 8 gig of samples, uh, original Hewlett Packard 54845A now. We'll uh, post the, I'll post the full video and maybe some other uh, clips of this um, uh, a little later. So I hope you found that interesting. Catch you soon. Bye.